Alternative medicine, invented in, well, there's a lot of different kinds. We'll get to them. Alternative medicine is a term used to describe medical treatments that don't work, and they are very popular with a wide range of white women. On one end, you got the 40-something suburban stay-at-home mom. She has seven children because her pastor told her contraceptives are a sin, but only four children lived beyond the age of six because she thinks vaccines cause autism, and she gets all her medical advice from C-list celebrities. On the other end, you got the 20-something liberal arts student. She took one indigenous studies course and now thinks she has a full understanding of native culture and believes that drum circles and sweetgrass will cure her depression. Despite her best attempts, she simply can't escape from her porcelain skin and European heritage, so traditional indigenous treatments have no effect on her. So she's moved on to other cultures to test out their healing techniques, all because she will never support, and I quote, the patriarchal, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, ableist, racist, fascist, capitalist system that is Western medicine. Okay, I just offered you a Tylenol, relax. It ain't that fucking deep. Today, we will be analyzing a number of alternative medical treatments based on how long they've been in use, how widespread their use is, and how effective they are. Starting off with prayer, the original alternative medicine. Every other form of alternative medicine is just prayer with extra steps. There's a lot of different deities people choose to pray to. God, Yahweh, Allah, Zeus, Odin, Jupiter, Indra, Krampus, Ziz, my dad, Ryan Reynolds, Kaiser Wilhelm II, and the one true God, Lil B. Thank you, base God. Prayer sees extensive use despite the theory behind it not really holding up. You're telling me that you, an average everyday person, has a direct line of communication to this grand higher power. Not only that, but this grand higher power actually gives a fuck about you and what you have to say. If you've ever played SimCity, you understand the problem with this theory. I'm up here in the clouds working on this grand metropolis, and some random ass clown tries to talk to me about themselves and their problems. Listen buddy, I'm busy right now, segregating this city by race and summoning giant killer robots in each section and seeing which race survives the longest, okay? I don't have time for you and your problems. What prayer lacks in effectiveness, it makes up for in intent. This person really believes they can ask the highest power they know to help someone else. That's kind of nice when you think about it. However, if you can provide actual assistance, you should probably do that. Oh, you were in a car accident. I'm so sorry to hear that. I hope you make a full recovery soon. My thoughts and prayers are with you. Thank you, I appreciate that. But I would actually prefer it if you would take me to the fucking hospital. So how long has prayer been in use? Fucking forever. How widespread is its use? Fucking everywhere. And its effectiveness? None. Cupping, the most complicated way to give yourself a hickey. The theory behind cupping is that it's drawing old, non-circulating, stagnant blood from deep muscle bruises and bringing them to the surface. No, that's not what's happening. Those cupping marks are bruises, just bruises, plain old, damaged blood vessels, blood is hemorrhaging into surrounding tissues, bruises. You can get the exact same results from someone's mouth as you do from a cup. There are also forms of cupping that involve small incisions being made on the skin, so the vacuum of the cup actually draws out blood. This is done to remove harmful substances and toxins and promote healing. It's actually just bloodletting, you know, the most common medical treatment in the world until the late 19th century. Very complicated procedure this is. It involves bleeding, and that's it. I hate to burst your bubble, but the reason this has fallen out of popularity is because bleeding is generally not an effective treatment for anything. More often than not, you're going to want as much of that blood inside of your body as possible. So how long has cupping been in use? A while, probably. I don't know. How widespread is its use? Surprisingly far. It's customary in some Asian cultures. Then you've got people who hop on any fad they see on Instagram. But you've also got legitimate professional athletes who do it. And I don't know, man. Maybe they just know something I don't. And how effective is cupping? Probably not at all. But from my own personal experience of receiving hic- I mean mouth cupping, I bet it feels pretty good if it's done right. Crystal therapy. Okay guys, I'm actually not going to talk about this. Uh, while I was writing the script, a group of really pale women with rectangular pupils showed up at my house and told me they were leaving this to watch over me. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I haven't slept in like three days. And every time I try to get rid of this fucking thing, it just shows back up in my house. If you're watching this, please, please come take back your goat statue. I promise I won't talk about your crystals. Ionic crystal lamps. Just kidding. Fuck you and your lame-ass coven. This goat is my dude now. His name is Jeffrey, and he promised to protect me from you, and all I have to give him in return is the soul of my firstborn child. If you're anything like my mother, aka a white woman, you may have purchased an ionic crystal lamp because you heard that it releases negative ions to purify the air and dilute odors. If you have done that, I'm willing to bet you don't know what the word ionic means. Go ahead, tell me what it means in the comments. I'll wait. 
okay, I can't actually check your answers now, so I'm just going to assume you're wrong. So, it's time to throw on our lab goggles and have a little recap of high school chemistry. If something is ionic, that means it's composed of ions, positive and negatively charged compounds which bind together by the attractive forces of their opposite charges. They balance each other out and produce an overall neutral composition. Salt is probably the most well-known ionic compound, made with positively charged sodium and negatively charged chlorine. Now everything is well and good so far. The product hasn't lied to us in its name. It is ionic, it is a crystal, and it is a lamp. But with regards to the releases negative ions part, well that's a big old fat juicy lie. If we want this bad boy to be releasing negative ions, we have to separate the chlorine from the sodium. And we're going to need more energy than that pussy ass light bulb can put out in order to do that. First, we need to heat this block of salt up to 800 degrees Celsius in order to melt it. Then, once we have our liquid salt, we run an electric current through it, and ta-da, we've separated the sodium and chlorine. Congratulations, you now have molten sodium violently burning as it reacts with the surrounding air, and incredibly hot chlorine gas violently burning every part of your body it comes in contact with. Remember though, this is what you wanted when you purchased a lamp that releases negative ions. So how long have ionic crystal lamps been used as a medical treatment? Well, never technically. The ionic crystal lamp does nothing other than be a lamp, so I can't judge its medical use. Uh, I guess I'll just judge it as a lamp. It, it's, it's nice. It looks kind of cool, I guess. I mean, it's nothing special, but yeah. 7 out of 10, good lamp. Chiropractic treatment. He protect, he attack, but most importantly, he... The inventor claims to have received knowledge of chiropractic procedures from quote-unquote the other world. When a chiropractor cracks your back, they create slight separation in the joints of your spine. Through these small gaps, demons pass through the protective vertebrae barrier and have direct access to your spinal cord. They then slowly travel up your spine, gaining access to your cerebellum and taking control of your body, forcing you to do their bidding which generally involves becoming a chiropractor yourself so you can expose other people to the chiropractic demons. Chiropractic has been in practice since 1895 when D.D. Palmer first had his brain invaded by a chiropractic demon. Its use is widespread and continues to spread due to the ambitions of the chiropractic demons and their goal to one day control all of humanity. Is it effective? I mean, I crack my own back and neck out of habit and it feels kind of good for a few seconds, so yeah, sure, why not? Acupuncture. Look, if you want to get stabbed repeatedly by an Asian lady, just go to the corner of Spadina and Dundas and start taking food off the displays and eating it without paying. It's way cheaper, and you'll get free food out of it. So how long has acupunct- Fuck this chart, who cares? Reflexology and Reiki. Okay, I, I don't even know with these two. Both of them are based on the idea of some kind of life force flowing within you, and when you're feeling unwell, that life force is, like, blocked somewhere. So with Reiki, you have a practitioner who, like, I don't even know, they just, they touch you a little bit and it frees up your energy and then you're all good. Uh, with reflexology, though, it's believed that different parts of your feet correspond to different parts of your body. And so if you massage these parts of your feet, you can free up energy in the other parts of your body. It doesn't make sense and it's fucking dumb. Homeopathy. Okay, listen, we've had fun today. We've learned a lot about some less than useful medical treatments. But homeopathy takes the fucking cake when it comes to being the least useful. Not just because it's making shit up. No, it actively goes against common sense and reality. Okay, you ready for this? The main theory behind homeopathic treatment. Dilution increases potency. Let's say you have a glass 100% filled with wine and another glass that is 50% wine and 50% water. Which of these glasses would be more effective in getting you drunk? Now, I'm going to make a big assumption here. I'm going to say you're not a complete moron. If that's the case, you selected glass A as the glass that would get you more drunk. Of course, right? It has more alcohol, so obviously it's more effective at what it does. What kind of an idiot would choose glass B? A homeopathic practitioner is the kind of idiot that would choose glass B. Because, as stated before, dilution increases potency. The alcohol in this glass has been diluted. Therefore, it is more potent more powerful, its effect on your body will be stronger. This makes zero sense if you give it more thought than none at all. Do homeopathic practitioners have any experimental evidence to prove that a diluted substance is more potent than a non-diluted substance? I don't fucking know. I try to do research on it, but every time I got a few lines into an article, I would suffer a brain aneurysm, so I've just given up on that. With that wine example out of the way, I'm going to close out with an explanation of one of homeopathy's most popular medications, acylococcinum. 
The dilution in that wine example was some pussy shit compared to the dilutions used in real homeopathy. We just did a one-step dilution to end up with a one-part wine to one-part water. Real homeopathy goes hard as fuck in their dilutions. So this oscillopil here is used as a treatment for the flu. The medication is a piece of duck liver that is diluted in the ratio of one part duck liver to 100 parts water. This dilution step is then repeated 200 times. So your final dilution ratio is one part duck liver to 10 sendotrigentillion parts water. Each oscillopil weighs only one gram, which means each oscillopil contains approximately one times 10 to the negative 400 grams of duck liver. To put that in perspective, a single proton weighs about 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24 grams. So the amount of duck liver in a single oscillopil is about 16 times smaller than a single proton. The rest of the pill, and by the rest of it I mean all of the pill, is sugar. If you're struggling to grasp how little medication is in this pill because the numbers are so small, I'll take this example in the other direction. How big of an oscillopil would you need to eat in order to ingest one single molecule of duck liver? Well, based on the dilution ratio of the duck liver, the final oscillopils would need to be roughly 10 to the power of 320 atoms in size. The entire observable universe contains 10 to the power of 80 atoms. So in order to ingest a single molecule of duck liver, you would need to eat a pill that is four times larger than the universe as we know it. This basically sums up alternative medicine as a whole. It's just ridiculous when you think about it. The theories behind them don't hold well within reality. But you know what does exist within reality? The placebo effect. So shit, if you're sick and you just want to pray or get massive hickeys or be stabbed multiple times or eat sugar pills and you think those things will make you feel better, then go for it. It may actually work. But please seek real medical advice for fuck's sakes.